welcome to another episode of Sailing Stories. This is the intro of uh, this series. Today we have uh, Paul. Yeah, Paul. My name is Paul. Mm -hmm. I'm from Vienna in Austria and I've been sailing for many, many years. Mm. How many years? It's now almost 40 years. So if, if you ask me for sailing, I start with six years. Six years? Yes, eh? and I'm 61 years old. So uh, 55 years of sailing. 55? <laughs> yes. Uh -oh. I started first on a lake which was near Vienna. Mm -hmm. And this small lake has a, yeah, almost no winds, but I had an optimist. Mm -hmm. And I started with this optimist and I went crazy because I didn't come home from 8 in the morning till the evening. Oh, and was only sailing on this small, it was, was not bigger than the Bay of Poros. Yeah. Oh. But it was adventure for me. And as a six-year-old child, I thought it was the Amazon, which was one hour away. Yeah. And then I got a, a bigger boat, a Corsair, which is a two-person uh, boat for sailing with a spinnaker. And I made some regattas. My father drove me to the lakes in Europe, to the regattas there. And afterwards, I settled down at the lake of uh, Neusiedl. This is about one hour away from Vienna. And this is a big lake. It's only one meter 80 deep, but uh, perfect for sailing because a lot of wind. And so I had this boat there and I spent every weekend there and every minute that I could afford to go sailing. So you practice there in order to go into yes. uh, the open seas afterwards? No, no, first the lakes. Lakes, yeah. And then I started as a sailing teacher. Mm -hmm. There was a sailing school and I was 12 years for sailing teaching employed there just for the summertime. There were many, many people, I think hundreds of people, whom I taught to how to sail. But only in the lakes? Eh? Only in the lake, never in the sea. The sea isn't different than the lakes. The wind and the technique works the same. So, charter boat. And then I started, I chartered in Miltemi season, a boat with five friends. And, and so I went three weeks from Rodos to Athens against the Miltemi. This was my first trip. Oh, really nice. Really nice. <laughs> and this was really beautiful and I loved it. What was the um, most uh, unique for you place in Greece that you should visit all these years? I think one of the most unique places, and that's what my boat is named after, was the island of Sini, which I saw in 1987. So this is near Rhodos and it was an not very crowded place where you could find a place for the boat and had nice people, nice restaurants and it was really secret tip which you had for the people and they said see me they don't know it so you had never saw many tourists there there was a ferry boat every day which came at five and nothing else no connection to the world what I like most is places that are not deserted and empty, but which are basic Greek and have still a life, a Greek life there, and don't have tourism and loud disco music and, and charter yachts like you have now with the flotillas and with this mass of, of boats. I think, and this is critic, uh, they don't respect anymore the other sailors. Before, the people that sailed were people who maybe had stress in their life or they didn't have holidays, they didn't like holidays in a hotel or a beach and they went on a boat and said, we're gonna see some places where it's not crowded and not loud and we can swim and enjoy the nature. Yeah, and this is now a more trend. Now it's trendy mm -hmm. and, and companies try to get more more and more people on board with the skipper, without skipper, in a flotilla. Uh, this is something that's, yeah, the trend of our time. Yeah. Money. 
could you tell me what's your longest trip that you have uh, done? The longest trip that I've done was uh, in the Bahamas, where I've been in Georgetown and went for five days to Cuba. And I went to the south coast of Cuba. Guantanamo is the famous prison, the American prison. And then I went to the southern, southern coast of, of Cuba. This was five days, five nights. What moments do you enjoy the most when you're sailing? What are the moments that you feel like, okay, now I'm really enjoying myself? Yeah, the most enjoyable moments are the ones where you don't do anything and just look at the sea, look at the waves and with your butt feel the boat that is moving or you just correct maybe the wind angle or you correct the sheet and where you forget what's around you. This is my, my most enjoyable thing and if the wind is right and the sails are fine, uh, it's the song from uh, Christopher Cross, if the wind is right you can sail away and find tranquility and this is what I'm looking for. I feel connected to the earth because I think you cannot find another place, another sport like sailing to get away from all hustle and bustle in the streets, in a car. You don't have red lights, you don't have any borders, you just can sail and have the waves and have to respect the sea. Exactly. That's what I do very much. And also you you hone the skill of being patient. Yes. The, the flow of time is changing it's after you are getting um, connected with the boat and with the, yeah. with the sea. It's like uh, riding a bicycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to go to, I go to Sicily with a bicycle. It mm -hmm. takes a long time. Yeah. yeah. And how do you spend your time when you are in the sea? You have uh, time for yourself? You are always looking uh, after adjustments to your boats? Most of the time when I'm sailing, uh, I'm sailing and watching the sails, watching the boat and try to get the best, best performance out of the boat and from the situation. So if the wind is uh, light, I try to be fast with the optimum of sailing adjustments. But uh, if there's strong wind, I try to get a safe passage and be safe to sail from A to B. And what I'm doing is uh, watching the boat. I'm not reading a lot. I'm not hearing, listening to music. Uh, uh, I'm looking on the water, watching the waves. But is it stressful sometimes to always look uh, at the boat and the uh, weather and uh, yes. you have control of everything? It is, it is, and you need to be very careful for the crew and for yourself and for the boat. And that's what I am. So uh, after a certain time and weeks, you get used to it. But if you stop sailing for the winter time, when I increase and I go home, I enjoy not looking at the wind programs in my mobile phone every day and say, tomorrow, five, to four. Yeah, so I enjoy doing nothing and having a home with windows that I can close yeah. and no shifting winds. But uh, you get used to it on the boat and that's what I like. And the work, yeah, the repairing is boring. But you find it boring sometimes. It's an annoying, let's say, yeah. because every day there's something to fix, every day. And even if it's a screw somewhere, or it's a bigger part of the, the, the boat, you have to fix every day. And sailing around the world is fixing boats in exotic places. What is the preparation before set sail? Uh, the preparations are the standard checklist, like in a plane, if you want to take off, you have to look for everything that's closed, the valves are closed, the right ones. If the motor is okay, the oil is okay, uh, if your batteries are okay, if the crew feels right to start and of course the weather. 
And uh, psychologically, is there a, a mindset that you have to have, let's say? I don't think so. I sailed for f almost 40 years on on the sea, and this is for me like if you go sit into a car and you start the car and you close the door and you take the seat belt. It's the same procedure. I know everything by heart, and uh, I don't have a checklist. It's in my my mind. And I know every move that has to be made, and I can feel if there's something wrong. What lessons have you learned through sailing that uh, has changed you as a person? I think when I was 10 years old or 11, I read a book of a sailor from Austria who sailed around the world alone in his own built catamaran of wood, nine meters and he went around the world and this was so fascinating to me this book that i started dreaming about sailing around the world so i think that my whole sailing experiences became more and my target was to sail around the world and that's what i learned uh, if you have a dream you have to keep on pushing until you maybe can fulfill it. So my lesson is, uh, if you like something and if you feel good, and that's what I'm doing when I'm saying, I feel good, my mind comes down. It's like meditation. And what you learn from other people, you see they have their books and they have their music. And when you start sailing, they say, okay, well, I read a book and I start the music. And I say, after three or four days, you will only look at the waves and you won't need music and won't need a book. And that's right. So sailing is always coming down and, and relaxation in your mind. I'm working on this plan for two years now. You're working on you? the plan for circumnavigation. I have a home in Vienna. And you ca I had a car which I sold, but you have insurance and children and uh, you have everything there and you need to get rid of this. And you, you know that you have three to five years or maybe seven years uh, on the sailing boat. So you have to do a good preparation. Yes. Well, to set everything right. Yeah. Oh. Could you give me some more information about your background and what you did before? sailing yeah so before sailing I sailed the whole life but I was working as a medical doctor and uh, had a stressful job with surgery and um, practicing in an office and in a hospital so I had 60 to 80 hours to work every week I had two children uh, it was a full-time job, more than full-time, and working for your own as you are um, not employed somewhere, uh, it's even more difficult. So sailing was always the only valve for me where I could get this energy which was bursting sometimes because I had so much stress. One week of sailing and all the energy was out, the bad energy and the new good energy came in. Oh, really nice. Yeah. And did you do this every year? You had time? I, I took the time. I took one week or 10 days with friends, always the same friends, and with a family, almost two weeks, holidays on boats. So I wasn't traveling a lot with uh, hotels and, and airplanes. I went to Greece and was sailing. <laughs> and Very this nice. brought me peace and uh, unstressed me. Is there any connection being a doctor with sailing? In my mind, I see that you have to be uh, very precise to both areas and you have a uh, good control of what you're doing. Yeah. That's a way that I perceive it, but I would okay. like to know... It's a good idea. That's right, because you, in my profession I had I must not make any uh, small mistake in an operation because it would end in a bad way. And on the boat, you have to also count every step. And I'm very precise. You could ask my wife. She knows 
I do everything very, very calm and with precision. Mm. Yeah. So there are connections. Oh. And the good thing is that you have your doctor on board. That's because very good. Some people say I don't travel because I don't have a doctor and I don't know where to get medical treatment. So that's one good thing that you know about meds and you know about what to take or what to do when you cut your finger off or something. It's very good and uh, the crew feels the, safe yeah, this way. The crew feels safe and uh, yeah. Thank you very much for your time and for the, this interview. Welcome, yeah. you're very welcome. Do you want to give some information? I think that you have a blog in the... Yeah, we made well. a blog and we want to make a blog um, with photos and some text and it's www.sailingseamy.com So if you want to join on Seamy, then come and see me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Welcome.